Welcome back. Welcome back to the channel. Um, so today I, I really wanted to just make a quick video showing how we can augment the current graph mapper, which we all know is a bit of a pain to work with, um, with its limited grasshopper functionality. Uh, the base graph mapper component has very few options for you to choose from. And if you're wanting to create a very unique data set or um, an interesting profile, whatever you want to do with this graph mapper, it's very, you're very limited with what Rhino gives you. And this is including sort of like augmentation or expansion packs like the rich uh, graph mapper, which you can find here, all you can download um, on Food for Rhino, which does give you more um, expanded functionality like Bezier 2 and, and sort of this polyline version. Um, but there's still problems with this. One of them being it's very difficult to find midpoints. There's no snapping with the graph mapper. Um, it's, it's very hard to combine types of graph. It's very hard to have a sine curve and a polyline sort of combined in one data set. So what I want to do today is show you how to design your own that you can draw in Rhino and we will, and, I'll, and then reference into Grasshopper. So you will never sort of be constrained by the limitations of the graph mapper again. I'm going to pose uh, a problem and we're going to solve it in two ways. One will be a super quick way. So you can watch that and just know how to instantly do this in exit my video, or you can go through the second method, which will diagram it out um, and, and sort of give you a behind the scenes of, of how it actually works. Let's dive in. Okay, our really simple problem that we're gonna be addressing is just, I have this curve and I'm gonna rebuild this curve with new Z values and we're gonna use the graph mapper to adjust the heights. Super simple problem. Um, and I'm gonna show you sort of the limitations of graph mapper. Uh, yeah, so currently in the graph mapper, there's a, a few different types. Um, so we're instantly constrained by what you can sort of build within this. I'm just having a curve and I'm dividing it by 35 points, which of course is variable, and then rebuilding these heights with the new Z that is coming through the graph mapper. The beauty of the graph mapper is everything is between zero and one, which will kind of will, is important to know later on. So what this range component is doing is that it is taking that domain of zero to one and, take, and then finding 35 steps in between that. So you get a, a series of decimal points that goes through there and are reevaluating on the Y axis for, um, for, for, those, for those points and then moving that geometry up. So first off, let's just quickly remap this. So it's not constrained to zero to one dimension in height. So the, the, um, let's build a new domain with construct domain. Sorry, I have the names on. Normally it don't work like this, but it's, uh, I guess it's pretty important for um, when you're sharing screen. So yeah, so let's just put a zero, zero. So now when I do this, it's going to be remapped all between zero and zero. But as I do this, we can exaggerate those values. So it's much easier to see how our graph is um, impacting that Z values. Okay, so, so the goal is basically is to replace this with a much more customizable uh, method. So what I have over here is a curve and a boundary box, and I intentionally did not design this on the zero zero value, because what you're going to find is you can do that and it might make your life a little bit simpler, but by not placing it on the, the zero zero, it just allows you to move this around and it, it's not impacted by size or scale and it'll always give you the same results, which is quite beautiful. So this first method um, is going to take advantage of uh, pufferfish components, which if I hold control alt, I can go in here and it's within the pufferfish component and it's called the curve graph mapper. Um, thanks to Michael Pryor for this one. Uh, and, and what this is, I don't generally use this one because it's, I find it a bit opaque and it's a little bit hard to understand what is going on behind the scenes. So that's why I'm going to show you a second method afterwards. But first, let's show this. So what simply what this will do is it just needs a, uh, a curve. We can put that bounding rectangle into one of these. And then the defining curve into another one. And what this curve will do is go in here. And then that curve will go into the bounding rectangle. And now we need to construct a same, uh, another series of numbers, which we can just use this range. Um, to plug into there. And what it automatically does, it inputs 10 steps um, into, into this graph. And now what we can see is if I, take, if I take the data out and just put it into a quick graph, which is a really handy component to visualize this, you can see what sort of um, thing we're doing. 
And if now I, so actually we had 35 points before, so I'm actually going to move, put the 35 into the steps. What you see is now it's a much smoother representation of that curve. And now I can go and replace this graph mapper with the new graph mapper I've, or the new data set that I've created. And now if I go here, you can see that we've instantly manipulated our line dynamically with, with this curve. And what you're going to find is I can move it around. It doesn't have to be in the exact same spot. And I can quickly modify it. Let's make it not symmetrical. And there will be an instant repercussion on that other curve. So if you don't want to know the behind the scenes uh, uh, on how that actually works, and you just want to be able to get it done quick, you can exit the video now. I'm going to now jump into how actually it all works behind the scenes. OK, we're going to start with the blank canvas again. And what we're going to start with is just this curve and, and that boundary rectangle. The method that I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to take this uh, boundary sir, um, boundary rectangle and if I treat it like a surface, and then what I can do is take points along that curve and and evaluate them and understand their UV in relation to the underlying surface. So the very first thing is let's just create that boundary rectangle into a surface, and now what I'm going to want to do is let me just quickly sketch is I'm going to want to evaluate multiple points along this x-axis and then draw curves that will intersect with that other curve, the other curve I've drawn. And then what this will give me is these values which are necessary to, to output as, as the y-dimension in the graph and the axis. So let's deconstruct the surface. Now I need to create a series of points along the x, uh, x axis. So let's, um, let's just evaluate the surface. And let's quickly reparameterize this so that it's always between 0 and 1. And then if I just create a series of points, or, or vectors in this case, which is OK, what this will give me is it's giving me now one point just because this x, y, z here is all starting at one. But if I once again give a range, now we're getting 10 steps. And if, and I recall we were going before with 35, so let's just try that. So we have 35, um, 35 steps that we're evaluating along that x axis. And now what we can do is we need to generate a line that we'll use to intersect. So we can just do a line SDL, which is, stands for um, start, direction, and length. And we can go here. We know that SDL is not in the Z direction, which is the default, but actually in the Y. So we can plug that Y in there. And now we just need a length. And to be honest, I'm just going to do almost an infinite one. Let's just say 1,000 because I don't really want to be bothered trying to find um, exact dimensions. And so now we have this curve. And now what we're going to use is an intersect. In the intersect tools, there's going to be a curve line intersection. And this will allow our two inputs to interface with each other. So we have this curve, which is representing the curve, our manual hand-drawn curve. And we're getting a bunch of lines here. So now we can do is take that. And now, if we hide all the rest of it, we can see we have 35 values, and once again, dynamic, that are evaluated along this graph. So we're actually most of the way there already. Um, what this is giving is now the points. And if I deconstruct these points, we're going to, we don't want the x values. If, if that makes any sense, because the x values we're defining with this range component, which you can see, which are these guys. So that's our x values. We actually want to take these y values. And if I actually show you with a quick graph what the y values are looking like. Oh, it's because, here, let's just flatten this. It's because they're all going into, the, for some reason, this curved line intersection just puts it into a new, each into its own individual list, but we can just flatten that. We don't need to ignore that for now. And what you see now is we have that exact same representation in the y values. There is one problem with this, which you can see if I take a list out or if I double click on the, the graph, 
is that you can see it's mapping between 14 and 31. And if I move this graph around, you can see that the values change based on this graph's position, which is not exactly what we want. We want it always between zero and one and not dependent on the actual X, Y coordinates. What we're gonna do is we're actually gonna do a surface closest point um, components. So we're gonna actually map this back to the surface. And if I, let me just move these guys. So rather than taking these points, we're actually gonna take these points. I'm actually gonna flatten this list here. We're gonna plug that into here and we're gonna evaluate it against this original surface. And now what this will do is it's gonna give us one critical different value, which is this UV point. So now if I take this UV point and plug it in rather than the actual point in XYZ space, it rather this is the UV point, so it's relative to that surface. So now what you can see is it's constrained to zero to one in all directions. So now we have this really clean list of values between zero and one that we can use and is basically exactly like a graph mapper, which you can see. So I could go back and now replace that original graph mapper and wait, let's link this 35 up because I already know I changed it up to 33. We want it to be consistent. So I can now delete this 33. And what you can now see is our values. Once again, we've now just, rather than using that, that, um, that pufferfish component, we've created our own. And we have a little bit more control and understanding of what's going on. So anyways, quick one. Just wanted to, to throw that out there. Two solutions, one really quick and dirty. Um, with using a pufferfish component and one little bit more behind the scenes and you might be able to understand what's going on. I tried many different, there's a ton of different methods to do this. You can do this about, without actually having to use any like sur surface closest point or pufferfish. You can do it purely mathematically by understanding the, um, the bounds, but this is just the fastest ways to go about doing this. I hope you found that useful and take care. Ciao.